walking stick. It's just a 36 inch dowel rod. Now I've had this one for a while. I'm gonna change the camera a little bit. I've got a different setup here because I'm trying to show you how to make this thing. So with this basic dowel rod that you pick up from, this one came from Lowe's. You can get them from Home Depot. You can get them from Menards or Ace Hardware, just about anywhere they sell dowel rods. This one is oak. It's an inch and a quarter. It's a little bit bigger. And I've been using this one for a while, but it started to get pretty rough on my hand. I started to feel little divots come in from striking against things, which is gonna happen when you make your own homemade self-defense walking stick. So I wanted to show you how to smooth it out or how to make one from the start. So it's good to see you, Will. Good afternoon. This is a piece of 80 grit sandpaper. You can see right there, that just means that there are 80 little pieces of sand about that on per square inch, I believe. Good afternoon, Garen, it's good to see you. Now I'm gonna take this dowel rod that I bought for, I think it was $7.99. It's 36 inches, which is about the perfect size for a walking stick, you lean on it. I'll change my angle just a little bit. I'm working with different gear here. This, um, but if they come rough, when you first get this stick from the hardware store, it's going to have been kiln dried, which means they're gonna suck all the moisture out of it. It's gonna break easily, more easily, too easily for self-defense. So you wanna oil it up. I'm gonna show you how to oil it up after you sand off the rough spots so that you don't get splinters in your hand. Once you do sand it off, you're gonna thrust, you can strike down, you can smash this through someone's face, you can whip it up very fast into somebody, you can bring it in like a bayonet attack or a rifle butt strike, you can lift somebody up off the ground with it. It's very effective for the prepper. If you're uh, uh, into prepping, and, and I, I am, I've been into it for a long time. I have dust all over me from sanding this thing earlier. But the best prepper, self-made self, uh, defense tool, something you can pick up and train with and then pick up any stick and use that. It's a disguised self-defense tool. I use a, my Irish shillelagh is the same length so I can train with this, roughen this up, make the, a lot of divots on it, beat it against things, and then carry my nice looking walking stick that's just as strong, but I don't have to beat it up. I can use my less than $10 all in homemade self-defense tool. So take the sandpaper, 80 grit, start with something rough first. And you're gonna use that. You just kind of hold it gently. If you hold too tight, you're not gonna be able to move it. So you wanna have a, a relaxed grip, just enough that you can twist and turn. And you're gonna to start to see the dust fly the sawdust. You're going to go all the way up and down around, turning your hand. You see that kicking off there. And that's going to rip up off or rip off all that rough stuff, all the things that are going to potentially become into your hand, uh, splinters in your hands. Then take your 120 grit. So you're going to have three pieces of sandpaper. The first is 80. This is 120. I'm going to go. Hit this next, nice and light. And again, don't squeeze too hard on the sandpaper. Allow it to slide through, just turn it over to the other side. And I can feel now all the rough stuff is gone, but it's still not super smooth. And I want it to be smooth enough so that when I slide it through my hands, I can do all my self-defense moves like I would with the Hanbo, the Japanese Hanbo. Hello, Peter. Peter's in Germany. Peter, we're just refreshing, reconditioning this Hanbo, and I'm showing you how to make your own homemade self-defense tool. If, you, if you're into prepping your uh, prepping self-defense tool, the homemade walking stick, or the self-defense walking stick, for less than 10 bucks, you get the dowel rod at the hardware store, three pieces of sandpaper, 80 grit, 120 grit, and this is 220, you can see it's always listed on the back side. It's printed there over and over. And then you take that. And again, it's a light grip, slide it up and down. You will go all the way through and it doesn't take long. It'll probably take about 30 seconds per piece of sandpaper the first time you do it. And if you're refreshing yours or you're like me, you're getting all the burrs off of it because I've been hitting it against things. And when you do that, sometimes the wood will dent. 
and that'll pop up a splinter. You don't want that to go in your hand. You're gonna knock it off with your sandpaper. And now, just from the sanding, it's messy too. It's really smooth. Now moves through my hands, feels like butter. I can smash with, I can do all of the moves for self-defense that I'm gonna teach you how to use this homemade self-defense tool. There's still, I don't know if you can see, see where that's a change in color. That's a little dent. So if I wanted to, I could spend a little bit more time sand down and get that off, but I wanna to get to some of the strikes here pretty quickly. Once you get all of the rough stuff off with your sandpaper, take a dry rag. You'd use a different rag than you would use for your oil, but I don't have another rag. I just wanna pull that off. Oh, make sure you sand this too. And sand a little bevel on the end. That'll help it slide through your hands better when you do your strikes. Once you knock that off, you're gonna use an oil like this. This is boiled linseed oil. I go back and forth between this and I like to use a min wax that has a little bit of wax in it, a little bit nicer oil. Then this is cheap. This whole bottle I think cost like $2.99 or something. And this will last you for years and years and years. Oh, and when you store your rags, lay them out, lay them out flat, ideally on a rock like outside and let them dry out. You don't ever want a crumpled up rag with oil sitting in the basement or in the garage anywhere near where there could be a flame from like a, a hot water heater or the flame in the kitchen that will just that'll just let go of that uh, the oils the, the gases will come off of this thing and that could ignite so make sure you take care not to dump your bag of rags anywhere or don't, put, don't put your rags down you just put a little bit of oil there and then the same as you did with your sandpaper Slide that through, Get that nice and smooth. And for less than 10 bucks, it's probably less than a penny's worth of oil so far. A couple dollars in sandpaper and less than $10 for the piece of wood. And this is an oak dowel. Again, this one, this one's a little bit more expensive because it's inch, inch and a quarter, but I have big hands. So now I have a one of the best self uh, prepper self-defense tools which is the homemade walking stick. You stand with a walking stick on either side of your body. It's disguised as a walking stick. There are three ways that you get into a position where you can defend yourself. One is by sliding your hand down the back of your walking stick. From here, you simply lift and thrust right into his face for self-defense. As hard as you can, smashing, using this hard piece of oak against his soft tissue, his teeth, his nose, his throat. So from here, you can slide straight down, pick it up and strike. From this position, you could also turn your thumb up and over in an upside down U. As you come through in that U, hello, Doug, you're going to turn your hips and shoulders. And that's gonna allow you, bring this in. That's gonna allow you to strike hard and fast up against the side of his head for self-defense. So you're here in this position, you're leaning on it, you sense the threat, you're paying attention to your surroundings, situational awareness, he's coming in, you're, hey, you put your hand up, you're getting too close, you simply slide your hand down the back, you can bring that up and in very quickly into his face, the thrust in this way, bring it in the other hand, you have a striking surface there, kind of like that rifle bayonet attack, slide your hand down, bring it through, almost like you're chopping a piece of wood with a big axe, like a big axe handle. So you have a lot of these basic strikes, bring your hands to the side, blasting, pushing straight through his face. Again, this hard bar of oak, smashing through the nose, teeth, into the throat for self-defense. Now the second way you can get into a better position for self-defense, using this self-defense prepper tool, slide your hand down the front First way was down the back. You get down the front, then you just lift it up. You point this. Oh, hello, Chrissy. Chrissy's in New Zealand. Point this at the threat. Now you have distance between you and the threat. He might have a knife or another bladed weapon or a chunk of concrete, a rock, an ax. I now have a long piece of 36 inches of oak, inch and a quarter, and it's heavy. But I can use this, simply stick it in his face, 
stop his forward advance. From this position, my other hand can come on and I can increase the weight and the power of that strike. I can bring it into my shoulder, chopping down, slide my hand, striking horizontally. This way, I can thrust in into his face, smashing, come down here, and bring this up under his chin, and then smashing straight in like we did the last time. So a lot of basic, simple moves, simple reasons why this is one of the best self-defense tools for preppers. The prepper self-defense tool, the homemade walking stick, or homemade self-defense walking stick, sliding down the back with the thrust, sliding down the front, getting into a better position, putting it between me and the threat. The third way you might carry it is you just walk with your hand in the middle of it. I see this a lot. I see this more often, more common than anything else. People around this area, especially in my neighborhood, there are two older gentlemen who carry, one carries an ax handle. He's 74, 75, sweet, gentle old man, has two little dogs, he walks in a stroller. But when he walks by himself in the morning, he carries this ax handle because he's been attacked by dogs and he's not gonna be attacked anymore. He's got some protection. The other one, equally as old, his is just a uh, dowel rod, just like that. I've stopped and inspected them both. I needed to know. So from here, I have two ways to get it into the other hand. Anytime you need to defend yourself, if you can get it into the other hand, that's best. You could bring it up and thrust straight through, kind of like a Zulu warrior with a spear, right? Stabbing right into their face for self-defense. Or you can lift straight into his throat, nose, mouth, teeth, eyes, anything you can remove or destroy for self-defense. Just a simple thrust like that. So bringing it in this way, bringing it in this way, get that other hand smashing, smashing down. You can change your hand position, especially once you've oiled it like that. Now it's easy to move back and forth. It's a good way to practice, by the way. Just like this to this, smashing, bringing the back through. You can have this almost like a pull cue strike, creating, that's a very effective strike, actually. You push it fast into their face, you have that reach, that distance. Again, there's no limit to what you can do with the prepper self-defense tool, the homemade self-defense walking stick. If it's in your hand like this, either you turn your palm up, now you have this alternating grip where your one palm is facing one way, the other palm is facing the other way, almost like an ax or a sword, or you can turn your hand over and you have it like you're doing push-ups. In this position, I can thrust, I can strike with this overhand or an angular strike or horizontal strike, or I can go down into the knee, or if it's that vicious dog, I can quickly use it to strike. I can take in this position and simply thrust. Sometimes the, the basic, most simple strike is the best. And when you take this and you push straight in, then it, um, it's very effective. Doug, Doug asked, do I prefer the heavier stick or the lighter? And let me show you the difference. You grab it, it's right here. They're both 36 inches, they're both oak, but you can see obviously one is a lot thicker than the other. This might even be an inch and a, quarter, an inch and a half, and this is an inch. So this one is much lighter. Lighter from here hits faster. Lighter's gonna hit faster. It's extremely strong. It's easier if your hands are arthritic, a little bit older. The reason I'm showing you this one is I like to work with this. This is almost for building my hand strength. I would prefer, Doug, to carry the lighter stick simply because it's, it's I think it's almost as strong. It's not gonna be as strong as a thicker wood, but it's almost as strong, but it's lighter. And lighter sometimes gives you pick up speed and this one you might hit harder in the end because you have so much weight behind it. But I think you're gonna hit just, not just as hard, but hard, hard enough for your purposes. And most of my favorite strikes are thrusting motions. So if someone's advancing, especially if you're older, you don't move as well as you used to, you can move really well, step at that angle, do your twisting motions, use it like the, the Japanese hanbo in the esoteric, the martial arts way, or use it as a big piece of wood, as a big pole. 
He tries to come closer, you stand your ground, stick it in his face, right? Stick it in his throat. Just like you were a Marine on the line, and you're standing, and they're about to break through, and it's hand-to-hand -hand combat. All you have left is you ran out of bullets, you have your rifle, you fix your bayonet, you're ready there, you're standing there. He comes in, you smash, right? Maybe smash this way, smash this way, smash this way. And so that's, that's a strong enough for that. If I go into swings, this heavier staff might do more damage because it's heavier, but I'm not gonna do a lot of swings. I might throw one or two. And I'm, probably, I'm not gonna rely on that to knock him out. I'm gonna rely on that to push him back. He might, it might not even hit him, he just might create some distance. And as I come through, I'll step in and I'm gonna hit him with these other strikes for self-defense. Because I, again, I don't, I don't picture most people that I work with getting into a long drawn out battle where they're switching sides and they're coming forward and they're blocking and they're spinning and they're turning and they're coming down and they're doing all the traditional moves that you might find in Japanese art using the hanbo, which is what this is based on. I imagine that you, if you do hit them like this, you're gonna be like this the next second, and then like that maybe, and then like this, and then maybe boxing their ears a little bit, smash on the head, and you're not dancing all around, you're not fancy dancy, you're just going straight in. So that's why, yeah, I like the lighter one, Peter says, long drawn out answer for a short question, right? But I wanted you to, I wanted you to see the biggest difference. And this, I mean, this is noticeably, if you pick them both up, you'd say that's heavy, that's really light. There's that much of a noticeable difference. They, probably, they both have the same amount of oil on them, so it's not a lot of oil difference. And you do want to get a, you want to get a lot of oil. When you make the, um, you start to use the self-defense or the prepper self-defense tool, the homemade self-defense walking stick, you want to oil it every single day for the first couple of weeks. And that, just that little bit of oil that I put on there, that's enough for the first couple of weeks for it to start to soak in and that oil is going to make it flexible and strong again because when they kiln dry it before it comes to the hardware store where you bought it they kiln dry it suck all the water out of it so it doesn't rot and it doesn't attract bugs when you get it it's going to be dry and brittle so you've got to sand it down you've got to oil it up but do that every every day for a couple weeks then you can do it every couple weeks for about i don't know two or three months and then do it twice a year or do it as needed. The more you smash it against things, the more you're gonna to wanna to sand off the burrs and get it smooth again and get the oil on it. And then the cool thing is, the oil from your hand, the more you work it, the more oil from your hand is gonna come into your staff. It's gonna become a part of you, an extension of your soul. But this is the, this is the light one. From here, it's, and it's also that diameter, right? If your hands, and, I've, and I work with so many, um, so many of my, Self-defense clients, we do the cane or we do the walking stick, are older, and they have arthritic hands, either trigger finger or they have the uh, the big big the big knuckles. I can't think of what that is, top of my head, but they've lost a lot of strength, and so it's um, Chrissy boiled linseed oil. She asked what kind of oil I use, so it's easier to go with a thinner stick. You don't want to go with that big chunky stick. It's hard on your hands. Go with a lighter stick, and then you have this boiled linseed oil or Minwax. I like to use uh, any kind of oil, any kind of oil that's kind of not a food grade oil. Food grade oils will go rancid, and then they stink. So if you go for one of these lightweight sticks or, or lightweight oils, it's going to feel really good in your hand. It's going to really nurture that wood. It's going to give you good flexibility and you're not going to break your stick as easily when you use it for self-defense. When you do a lot of these thrusting motions, you're not going to break your stick almost at all. You're welcome, Chrissy. Thanks for that question. And that's why, that's another reason I like these thrusting motions so much. If I had to defend myself with this big strike and he covers up and it breaks off of his arm and all of a sudden my stick's this long, right? It's only this long. I've lost a lot of the ability to defend myself with it, especially if he's got a weapon. But if I stand my ground and I thrust, it's not going to break. It's not going to crumble in that position. I'm always going to have better ability 
to defend myself if I stick to a lot of thrusting motions. And how many thrusts can you do in a few seconds? You can do a whole bunch. And how many would you do? You would thrust until he's no longer a threat. Let me push him back two, three, four, five, six times, and then think about what your targets would be. You'd be trying to go through the nose, or the teeth, or the eyes, or into the jaw, or into the throat, into the solar plexus, between the belly button and the private parts, down into that thin fascia of muscle that keeps your guts in. And so you're using hard wood with your whole body behind it against soft flesh. And you're just, and you're keeping it simple. That's why I don't want you to try to time his strike. He comes in with a punch and you're gonna parry and block. You're gonna twist him up. You're gonna put it behind his back and you're gonna flip him on his head. And you'll see those techniques and they do work but they, you need to have exceptional timing. You also often need to be able to move to the side and have the ability, and you can do that. I'm not saying you can't, but what I'm saying is, if it's life or death, he's got a knife, then don't try to block the knife. Stick it through his eyeball, right? Smash him in the face. Try to knock him out on the top of his head, on the side of his head, smash into his neck, and hit that nerve that flushes the blood out of his brain. And stick him on the ground like a sack of garbage that he is for self-defense. Oh, since the ambulance says his arms are in agony, Kane warm-ups with his students all week. I'll bet. I, that's a great feeling, though, isn't it? I'm in a, uh, I teach a couple hundred kids a week right now during the day. I just got done. I had seven classes today so far. And then I just finished a boxing class here with the teenagers. And uh, but we've been jumping since the ambulance, jumping all week. I teach you this jumping unit. We've been jumping for four weeks now. Everybody is jumping higher and higher and higher. But the cool thing is, it builds strength in your ankles and your knees, keeps you young, leans you out faster. And uh, if, for old people like us, right, you can still, you can hop a little, work yourself up to a hop, and then as you start to do more and more of that, you get stronger and stronger. There's no limit to what you can do. Yeah, so this is the weapon, the basic prepper self-defense tool. This is not a psh, psh, psh weapon, it's not a bladed weapon, but this doubles as a walking stick. This can be in your car. And then someone can pull you over and say, why do you have that big stick, sir, ma'am? And you say, well, it's my, it's my hiking stick, it's my walking stick. You know, I just go around and, you know, you don't tell me you can carry it to get rid of the dogs. You don't say you're carrying it just for, you know, self-defense. You say it's a walking stick. You know, I just made it. And then and you can make it look really pretty, right? Do a little carving on it. You can uh, put some uh, dark colored, uh, what do they call that? Uh, stain, <laughs> wood stain. You can stain it a little bit. You can even get all uh, old school and figure out how to do like vegetable stains out of like beets and berries and stuff. And make it your own, right? But then at the end of the day, it's, it's, a, self, it's a very effective self-defense tool. And the cool thing is, you might train with this at home or in the self-defense school. You train with it over and over and you get become very proficient. And then you're out and about and you don't have it with you, but something happens and you have to defend yourself and you look around and I promise you, you're gonna find some version of a stick. Whether it's this long, shorter, longer, uh, this is the perfect, the same length as an umbrella. And an umbrella used in the same way mostly as a thrusting self-defense tool, is very effective. So it might be an umbrella. We have, we go to the beach, I live in South Florida, we go to the beach all the time, and people who vacation come down here, vacation for the week, get on the plane and fly back, but while they're here, they buy a beach umbrella, and then they throw it away, brand new, you know, barely used, boom, in the garbage can. So when you walk up and down the beach, and the garbage cans, every third or fourth garbage can, almost every single time we go, there's an umbrella, a beach umbrella. There's my weapon, that's my self-defense tool. If I needed it, somebody's, some crazy guy's got a knife or something, I don't wanna use my hands, I pick up my beach umbrella and then I can defend my family, defend myself. Hello Richard, it's good to see you. Richard, we're using the Kane's cousin, the walking stick. So that's all I have on this one, on how to make your own. Um, yeah, there you go. Doug said, take it, take it to the grocery, put it like that and then you look like um, Huck Finn. You know, walking around with your sack or, you know, with the old, uh, what do they call it? hobos on the train line with your food hanging off the back. You can carry it like that. I don't know why not. Go for it. But it's a really fun, basic self thing. Yeah, flagpole, 
make, make, make yourself a challenge and then come back and put it in the comment section. Go around your day tomorrow, the next couple days, and look for self-defense tools. Look for self-defense tools that look like this. It doesn't have to be as long, doesn't have to be made the same way, doesn't have to be as big as a round, or it could be even bigger. But what can you find? I can think of, I, I do this all the time. Wherever I go, I'm always looking for exits. I'm always paying attention to who else is there, situational awareness, and I'm looking for self-defense tools. Things I can pick up and throw with accuracy that might have some weight, like a can of beans or lima beans, or a chunk of concrete for self-defense. If I have nothing else, and that guy's an active shooter comes in, I'd rather throw something if I have to fight. Run, hide, fight, but when it comes to the fight, what are you gonna use? That's, something's better than nothing. If they have a knife or a hatchet, there was another story last week here in New York City. There was a man, crazy guy, had on a, a Halloween mask, walking around with a hatchet, goes up, says to a, gets in an argument with a guy on a chair, and whacks him with his hatchet a couple times. And I'm thinking, you know, if you have a tool to use, use a tool. If you don't, use an elbow. And we make a lot of videos on that too. What to do, unarmed self-defense against somebody with a knife or a hatchet, use your elbow, cover your head, smash in. We'll go over that again next time. But you guys have been awesome. This is kind of a rough start to this video. I wanted to squeeze it in because I had a few minutes. We'll do this again. I want to show you over and over how to make your own self-defense tools. If you're a prepper or not a prepper, you're just somebody who wants to be prepared for self-defense so you don't have to panic when the situation, the stuff hits the fan. This is a good way to start. Get one of these and start to work with it. Richard said he made an oak combo. This one's oak, Richard. They're very useful, as you said.